Let us pray. Holy Spirit, fill this place. Be in us, be through us, be around us. Fill us with your peace. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and glorifying to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There's only one time in my entire life where I almost became a country song. That time came when Pastor Andrew and I were on our two-week road trip out west about a year after we were married. We were heading back east on I-40, and we heard about the Cadillac Ranch near Amarillo, Texas. Now, for those who may not know about the Cadillac Ranch, it is quite literally 10 Cadillacs buried in the ground with their tails up in the air just west of Amarillo. They did this in a way to demonstrate the evolution of the Cadillac tails. And not only could you get up close and admire the back ends of these vehicles, you could also spray paint, which was conveniently available at a store just down the street, any kind of design or message that you wanted. I must admit, though, I was not a fan of the idea of stopping. I thought it was a tourist trap and would delay us from getting to our destination, which was Oklahoma City, at a reasonable hour. But Andrea wanted to go, and she was driving. So despite my protest, we stopped to check it out. These cars were out in the middle of a field, and there really wasn't much to it, in my opinion. At that point, I was pretty frustrated by the whole thing, and I said out of that frustration, I got a whole mouthful of Texas dirt for this. Needless to say, that wasn't a good idea. If looks could kill, I wouldn't be your pastor today. Pastor Andrea was really mad, and I'm pretty sure if she wasn't as good a person as she is, she would have gone back to the car and left me stranded in Amarillo. Thus, I would become a country song. Of course, the Cadillac Ranch wasn't the only place along I-40 or I-70, for that matter, that you could be tempted to pull over. I mean, who wouldn't be interested in seeing the world's largest golf tee? That's in Illinois. Or the world's largest ball of twine? Somewhere in Kansas. Or even the world's largest cross in Effingham, Illinois. These and other things can be interesting and even fun to see. And they have signs, some of them pretty elaborate, enticing you to come and check out this one-of-a-kind thing. But more often than not, they turn out to be a little bit of a disappointment and not even worth the time that we take to stop and look. And we find that we've been sidetracked in our journey. Our passage uh, of scripture this morning comes immediately after Jesus' baptism. Jesus barely has a chance to dry off and change clothes before he is driven by the Holy Spirit out into the wilderness where he spends 40 days fasting and praying. But Jesus wasn't really alone while he was in the wilderness, right? He had company. While Jesus was fasting and praying, he was greeted by the devil. The devil, the accuser, Satan, is not a new character in the Bible by this point. The devil plays a prominent role in the story of Job and in the book of Revelation, in the final battle of good versus evil. We, and in this passage today, we see the devil playing a prominent role once again. We hear a lot about the devil or, or Satan, and when we see depictions of him, what do we usually see? We usually see a monster-like creature with horns and a sharp pointed tail that carries around like a trident and lives underground. The idea of, a dev of the devil as this monster-like character doesn't actually come from biblical texts. It comes from the epic story Dante's Inferno. What we glean from our Luke text this morning, however, is a character of the devil that is bold, cunning, clever, 
and powerful. Commentator Ruth Ann Reese points out that the characters in our story today actually present us with two compelling storylines. The devil offers a storyline of self-indulgence. Make yourself bread from stone. Self-aggrandizement. All the nations of the world will belong to you if you worship me. And a self-serving religious identity. If you are the son of God, cast yourself from the top of the temple. Meanwhile, Jesus responds with quotations drawn from the Old Testament that show awareness of the true source of life and identity. He knows that life is more than food. His reliance on God, the one worthy of true worship and service, and his understanding of God's character, not one to be tested. Jesus' responses are rooted in an underlying narrative that he is dependent on God rather than on, on than self for life, glory, and identity. Bread, power, safety. But it just might as well be youth, beauty, and wealth, or confidence, fame, and security. On one level, we experience specific temptations very concretely. But on other, another they are all the same, as they seek to shift our allegiance, our trust, and our confidence away from God and toward some substitute that promises a more secure identity. Which is why the ultimate temptation in this story is identity theft. And not simply the devil's failed attempt to steal Jesus' identity, but all the attempts to rob us of ours. Whenever you take a road trip, especially on the interstates, you are continually bombarded with billboards and other signs tempting you to get off the road. They are tempting you to become sidetracked on your journey, wasting valuable time. We are living in a time in our faith lives and in our congregation's life where that we are experiencing a great deal of transition. The first transition is continuing our return to normal as far as in-person gatherings and activities are concerned. The second transition is the transition from Pastor Andrea and I as your pastors to Pastor Crystal coming in as your pastor in a few weeks. Both of these transitions are big transitions in the life of any church, let alone having both of these transitions at the same time. With all the changes and transitioning transitions happening, it is really tempting to want to pull over, to lose focus of the mission and vision that God has given us, to go from a people laser focused on our mission and vision to a people driven by our own personal preferences and desires. In many ways, the temptation to go back to our own personal preferences and focusing on our own people is a natural response to change. It is natural in human interaction to close ranks and return to what is comfortable whenever there is uncertainty or threat. To pull off for a while until things settle down or restrictions are um, to our personal liking. To pull over and check out that shiny roadside attraction. Every day, we are met with an avalanche of tempting messages that seek to draw our allegiances away from God. Every day, we are met with flashing lights and messages that attempt to take us away from a God who created and redeemed us towards something far less, a much more meager substitute. And I don't know about you, but the distractions and flashing lights are much brighter and more tempting nowadays. Yet through our baptism, through gathering together every Sunday as a community of faith, we are reminded that we are loved by a God so passionately that God came down to earth in the form of Jesus Christ to experience the same temptations we do, to feel the pain of rejection and death in the same way we do, to show us that no matter what we hear, what we feel, we are beloved children of God. Friends, now is not the time 
to pull over. No matter what Satan or the rest of the world is telling you about what is important or who you should really be or who how things are going, no matter the shiny objects that are put up to try to lure us to pull over and go somewhere else, we must continue to encourage each other to stay focused on what God has given us. The mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I'm not saying... It is an easy task. In fact, not getting distracted is one of the hardest things to do right now. But when we stay focused on our mission and vision, when we remember to keep the main thing the main thing, we can continue to live out our mission, even in the face of the changes and transitions we are experiencing. Stay focused, friends. God is with us. You are enough. Amen. Go from this place, friends. Remembering that we are called by God to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Stay focused. Don't pull over yet. There's still work to do. In the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.